Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be looking at the the latest premium tank to World of Tanks console, the Banshee Comet, which is well has been done uh, for St. Patrick's Day. And a bit of a quick warning just straight away, I'm feeling quite salty today. So I'm going to try not to let that affect my review too much, uh, but yeah I am feeling a little bit salty. Um, today I don't know, I just feel a bit fed up, I don't know what it is. And uh, it's not, to be honest, not helped by this tank. But anyway, let's get my personal feelings on this tank out of the way, and then I'll try and just stick to the facts and figures if I can. I hate the comment. It's a mediocre bag of shit. There you go. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, I've never liked the comment. Oh, wrong one. Uh, never liked it. Never particularly got on with it. Just, um, I've always felt that the comment, and, and do you know, I know that there's people out there that, that love this tank and that can use it really well. But personally, um, I've always felt that the Comet and Tier 7 Mediums in this game in general, I don't know what it is about Tier 7 Mediums, and it's only the Mediums, not the Tier 7 Heavies, but Tier 7 Mediums in this game in general are just mediocre. Um, they may have sort of one trick about them, like the Panther, fantastic pen. Um, this just feels like a bit of a one-trick pony for ridge lines, and that's about it. And I've always felt that it's 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 always been a bit of a disappointment after the Cromwell. The Cromwell is fantastically nimble and mobile, and a great fun little tier six medium. And then you get to the Comet, and you you lose you know your mobility, you lose some top speed, uh, acceleration, etc. And what you gain for for losing that is a very marginal armor increase. Uh, let's face it, uh, a very and also a very marginal uh, penetration and. Uh, damage increase because it's only five more damage, which is, you know, you've gone up a tier. I can't think of many others that, that don't really shift that much going up a tier. Well, I can, I can think of the odd one actually, looking back on it now. Um, but anyway, but yeah, you, you just get a marginal pen and anything increase, but yeah, the, that's out of the way. I'm not a fan of the comet, I don't particularly like it. I feel it's a one trick pony, it's only good for ridge lines. And the gun mantle on PC seems to be particularly trolly, and on console it just seems to let well get penned when you crash into a dragonfly. Um, but not going to let that uh, influence this too much. They're just my personal feelings. Get them out of the way. Like I said before, feeling quite salty today. Um, but yeah. So the Banshee Comet. Uh, let's have a look at the price. Or can I? No, nope, uh, because I've already bought it, and there's only one in here. Uh, I think it was around 9,000 gold, which is quite expensive-ish um, for a, a tier 7 premium. And this is the other thing. I, I'll talk a bit more over the, the gameplay footage, just about the state of some of these premiums in general. But um, but yeah, so it it is... It's a reskin. At the end of the day, it is a reskin. And... Um, one of the things I was going to say over the, the replays, but I think I'm going to say it now, is that Wargaming have said before quite a few times that you know premium tanks are not supposed to be as good as fully upgraded tech tree equivalent. They're supposed to be sort of in between stock and, and fully upgraded. However, a couple of these we've seen recently have been at least as good as fully upgraded tech tree ones, if not slightly better. And this is a perfect example. It is the same as a fully upgraded tech tree comet, uh, except this has had a buffed aim time slightly buffed terrain resistances and the only drawback that you get from it is a slightly reduced radio range like a big whoop it's not really a drawback is it particularly um but yeah let's let's just get into it and have a look so for those of you that love the comet you'd be thinking well that's not a bad thing actually you know that's fair enough and in some respects it's not a bad thing but you are paying a crap load of gold out for a tech tree tank uh, just with a couple of bonuses, so you know it's up to you. But it, it just—I thought we were kind of going away from this a little bit, to, from these sort of—and let's face it, lazy feeling reskins. Um, whether it looks nice or not, it's still kind of lazy, and the sandbags do not act as spaced armor either. Um, so yeah. Anyway, stats-wise, almost exactly the same as a tech tree. Full upgraded Comet, same engine size, 650, same rate of fire, same gun, 15.38 rounds a minute, 148 pen, which, to be honest, it feels a bit anemic, but then again, the pen on most of the tier 7 mediums feels anemic, uh, with 140 damage, 208 for your premium rounds, uh, improved aim time at 2.1 seconds, as opposed to 2.3, I think it is on the standard Comet, and accuracy is the same at 0.34, uh, traverse, 
point three eight is thirty six degrees on the hull, same. Um, traverse on the turret forty six degrees, same. Uh, view range three hundred eighty again, same. The only difference uh, again, or the only other difference, should I say, signal range five hundred and seventy meters instead of seven hundred meters. But apart from that, it's the same. Um, and of course, this has obviously got the uh, slightly increased concealment ratings but in theory if you put camouflage on a tech tree comet it should have the same concealment ratings which is why we need active stats on here like they have on PC um, sometimes wargaming do seem insistent on bringing the, the stuff from PC that we don't particularly want and leaving the things that we do so anyway uh, so yeah you know admittedly it does look kind of nice you know skin wise yeah it just looks alright it looks nice um, the sandbags, again, something I mentioned before, they don't act as spaced armor, as I've, as I've just said, but, you know, I think they should, or shouldn't, um, on all tanks, because at the moment we're getting some of these tanks, and a lot of them have got sandbags on. Some act as spaced armor, some don't act as spaced armor, and I think it should be one or the other on all the tanks, just for consistency. Um, I'd prefer it if all sandbags acted as spaced armor, for consistency, but anyway. Uh, so, this is on the press account, so I'm not going to go into skills too much. Um, to be perfectly honest, I hated the Comet. I got through it. Well, I'd gone through the, the heavy tank line, so I didn't have to stay in the Comet for very long, and I, I did free XP out of it towards the end, I think, because I, I just didn't like it. Um, so, skill wise on the crew, it's not something that I feel overly qualified to speak about. I mean, personally, I'd probably set it up as a, a sort of yeah, sort of um, pseudo sniper, sort of pseudo TD type thing, because it just doesn't seem it's not got that mobility to get yourself out of trouble like a Cromwell does. You know, you can blast in in a Cromwell, and if you realise you've just got into trouble, you can generally get your ass out of there uh, as quick as you got in. This doesn't seem to to do that. Equipment wise, I've just gone pretty basic: uh, vertical stabilizer, gun rammer. And coated optics. Now, one of the things it does say about this is that it's great at snapshotting. Um, in my personal experience, again, in my personal experience today, that seems to be a big fat lie um, because I seem to just be missing most of the snapshots. And in fact, I have missed shots that were fully aimed. I was sat still, they were sat still, and the shell just went wide. And right, I mean, I'm not just talking a little bit, I'm like, where the hell did that go? Um, sort of thing, but again, that could just be my bad luck today. Um, and again, uh, yeah, yeah, I did say I'd try not to let my saltiness uh, mar this review too much, um, and I do apologise for that. But yeah, it is a comet. Th there's not much more I can say about it. It is a tech tree comet with a better aiming time, and and that's it really. So those of you that love the tech tree comet are going to love this tank, and you're going to be able to earn money in it, you're going to be able to train crews in it. Those of you, like myself, that really don't like the Comet, you're not going to like this tank, don't even entertain buying it. Um, so it's just simple as that. Um, and and it's, I don't know, it's one of those things that there should be, I don't know, I feel that there should be more differences with this, just something, something else different, because at the moment, as I said, they've just stuck a skin on a tech tree tank, and that's it. Um, shell wise, again, it's all the same. 150 for your, for your armor piercing, 2800 for your PCR, 75 for your high explosive. And uh, again, it's sort of, you know, it, it's what to say about it. Um, your, your power to weight ratio is 19.88. And, and again, just assume it's the same as the Tech Tree Comet, unless I say otherwise. Uh, 51.5 kilometers an hour top speed forwards, 18 in reverse, although it does feel kind of slow in reverse. It doesn't feel like 18 in reverse, uh, with a 20% chance of fire, um, and the engine block is, is just there behind the uh, turret. It doesn't reach the end of the hull, um, so it's basically just behind the turret and about halfway between there and the back of the tank. Something the Comet does have going for it, though, uh, is its fantastic gun depression at minus 12 degrees. Oh, uh, something else as well that's slightly different on this. The accuracy on moving tank. On a standard Comet, it is 0.54. On this, it is 0.51. So, again, you kind of could, theory, call pay-to-win, because, well, pay-to-win is essentially 
you pay money to get something better than is than than what you can earn for free in the game. That, that's essentially pay to win, and this is better than a Tech Tree Comet. Um, you know, you can't deny it. It's got a better aim time. It's got better accuracy while it's moving, and it's got slightly better terrain resistances. Um, it is what it is. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, max elevation twenty degrees again, quite workable. But this is, I mean, it it, it does excel on ridge lines. Um, but you can't just stay there because that gun mantle doesn't seem as trolly on here as it as it sort of does in videos I've seen on the PC. You are going to have to move back and forth, and sort of you know try and do that sort of snapshotting type thing. But again. I don't feel qualified enough in the comments to give you too many gameplay tips. I'm just going to try and tell you how it is um, and give you the facts and figures, like I said before. So, terrain resistances. Uh, again, as I said, slightly improved over the, the Tech Tree Comet. 0.9, 1, and 1.7. I think the Tech Tree one is something like 1, 1. Point, uh, I think it's 1, 1. 1 and 2. In fact, do you know what? I'll just check. Uh, 1, 1. 1.1 and 1. 1.9 for your standard one so yeah this one does have the better ones um, at 0.9, 1 and 1.7 so it is a little bit better on all types of terrain turret on top signal range as I said before is a bit shorter uh, the radio is just behind the commander's hatch towards the back of the turret ammo blocks same location one sort of basically both of them stretching across the tank at the front and the rear of the turret uh, roughly from just above the level of the uh, the top of the tracks down to the hull floor. Crew members, same place again. Driver, hull machine gunner, gunner, loader, and commander up in the, sat up in the turret there. Now your concealment, 0.28 and 0.22. Uh, roughly about 0 0.03 better than the, the Tech Tree one because of the perma skin. Obviously you can't put camo on this. You can put one emblem and it goes on the front right uh, fender. And you can put in uh, inscriptions on it as well but obviously no camouflage but again in theory if you put camo on a tech tree centurion uh, centurion comet then it, it would have the same camo rating as this one uh, armor wise again it's uh well it's the same so you're talking 76 on the front hull 43 on the side 32 on the rear turret 102 64 and 57 and that's front sides and rear now, even though it says in the Tankopedia it's 102, according to the armor viewer here, it's 101. Um, down there, it says 8 to 101 mil overall. So, uh, And then up at the top, it says armor depth 8 to 102. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. We're losing a millimeter somewhere in translation. Um, but again, there's not going to be much that's going to come up against a comet that can't pen it. Uh, some of the lower tiers might struggle to pen its turret uh, with its gun mantle. But most things it's going to come up against are not going to struggle to pen this thing. Uh, the the thing about... I mean, the Cromwell doesn't have particularly strong armour. But it's got that mobility going for it. This doesn't have particularly strong armour. Uh, very, very little sort of improvements going on between this and the Comet. You know, considering you're moving up a tier as well. And uh, I think I said on Twitter earlier that I've often felt that the only reason that this is in-game at Tier 7 is to transition you from the playstyle of the Cromwell to the playstyle of the Centurions because it's kind of in between a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I say, you, you know, you're going to see other reviews that are raving about this thing and, and loving it probably. Um, but they, you know, they probably like the the Tech Tree Comet. So, one to twenty mil. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of the uh, the armor. But again, you're used to seeing comets on the battlefield. You know how to take these down. It's not going to be anything new to you, um, and so far I don't think I, I think I've bounced like one, maybe two shots off my gun mantle. Most have just gone straight through, or just gone through the turret. Uh, but you've got the engine deck, you've got the tracks, you've got the whole floor, and you've got the top. Is that the top of the turret? No, it's not the top of the turret. It's the rear part of the top of the turret, and the top of the commander's hatch. Twenty-one to thirty mil front part of the turret, front part of the deck, and the sort of lower lower glacis, if you will. 51 to uh, sorry 31 to 50 mil is your commander's hatch you've got a small strip around the gun mantle uh, the sides of the tank the rear of the tank falls into that one and the upper glacis which does have quite a decent angle to it but again it can still get penned quite easily but most people just go for your flat 
driver's hatch compartment because just about everything has enough pen to get through it. Uh, 51 to 70 mil is the sides and rear of the turret and the lower glacis. 71 to 90 is the uh, well the, the driver's compartment bulkhead at the front of the tank, if you will, the frontal, very front part of the hull, uh, just in front of where the driver sits. And again, you've got little bits on the turret and little patches on the gun mantle and through it. And then 91 to 120 is the front of the gun mantle and the front of the turret. Now, it doesn't seem like there's any armour behind that gun mantle at all. I know some of these tanks, you basically, you've got the, the turret front, then you've got a space, then you've got the gun mantle itself. With this, it doesn't seem as though there is anything of that. It, it just looks as though there is nothing behind the gun mantle whatsoever. So it is just plain 101 or 102 millimetres, whichever it is. And uh, it doesn't seem to, to bounce too much at all. However, if you are using the ridge lines, and just popping up and down. If you're doing it properly, you will only be leaving a, a very small target to shoot at. And uh, you've just got to hope that they don't time it properly to slam one straight into the front of you. But anyway, enough of me moaning about this in the garage. Let's get into the replays and see how it actually handles. Right, so here we are for the first of the replays. And I was that busy moaning about the uh, about the Comet in general and about reskins and everything in the garage. I did actually forget to go on about the bonuses. Right, so this gets a 60% uh, a uh, silver bonus and a 20% XP bonus. So, like, as I said in the garage, I mean, just a, just a quick summary for anybody who might have skipped the, uh, the garage part. This is a reskin of the Tech Tree Comet, fully upgraded Tech Tree Comet with a slightly better aiming time, ever so slightly better terrain resistances, and... Um, Obviously, you know, alongside the premium bonuses, um, it's also got a slightly reduced radio range now. And again, just as I said in the garage, um, anybody who really likes the Comet and gets on with it, you know, they're probably going to like this premium because it is just a tech tree one, but slightly better. And uh, you're going to be able to earn money and train crews, as I said before. And I think the reason I get so... just so annoyed and pissed off with reskins re and you know things like this that just seem a little bit like a, a lazy reskin and there is really no difference is and it, it, you know and it is quite expensive for what it is and the reason I get so frustrated and so annoyed with it all is and and again I, you know I mentioned on Twitter this you know some of this uh, you will have seen on Twitter some of you because um, I was on about it yesterday and uh, same with some of these prizes uh, I don't think the prizes for Tank Madness have been thought out very well I think they should all have been the same tier because you know you're potentially going to lose out depending on who wins you're either going to you know could end up with a tier 6 or you could end up with a you know a, de you know, a decent tier 8 tank and it, it, I don't know I just think it was badly thought out personally but the reason I get so frustrated is because I, I do really like this game. I do genuinely like this game. I enjoy it. And I want to see it carry on succeeding and getting better. But when they keep doing these reskins and just churning them out every couple of weeks, new premium tanks every couple of weeks, it, it just... It does. It, it just gets a bit frustrating. It, it's starting to drive some of the player base away. And unfortunately, they seem to have a bit of a habit of listening to the smallest uh, the smallest part of the community. Just a, a small minority that seem to shout and complain the loudest on, on the forums. You know, not everybody on the forums does that, but that seems to be so what it is instead of listening to the community at large uh, with, with some of these. But... That's why I get so frustrated with these reskins, where you know, where they bring out a new premium tank and it, it is just a, a skin stuck on a tech tree one. And I just think some more thought and time ought to be put into it. Maybe even just you know, we don't need new a new premium tank every couple of weeks. We don't. I mean, let's face it, there are there are loads, hundreds, you know, loads and loads in the game already. Um, we don't need a new one every every couple of weeks. And I think, you know, just leave it. Give it, you know, if you want to do it once a month, whatever, you know, do it once a month. But I, I don't think we need one every couple of weeks or, you know, a couple of months sort of thing. Um, do it once a month or once every couple of months. But also just 
keep some of them rarer as well because recently it just seems to be these tanks are popping up constantly they're always coming back and forth on sale and it, it just keep them a little bit rarer as well and, and sort of go back to that and I know obviously we've got to try and make money it's a free to play game we've got to try and make money somewhere um, but yeah I just think slow down a little bit on some of these premiums put a bit more thought into it and you probably will make more money because more people will buy it because there's more thought put into it it's not just a reskin tech tree tank and that's why I get so frustrated and so pissed off with it all because I don't want the game to fail I genuinely enjoy it and I want it to carry on succeeding and getting better but anyway yeah I told you I was uh, feeling a bit salty um, <laughs> but yeah I mean I don't know it's alright me saying oh yeah you know this is it's the St. Patrick's Day tank I feel it's a bit of a lazy reskin and, and yada 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 and not, not offering up any suggestions or alternatives but I've just done a bit of research, and I mean, I, I'm having to finish this video off this morning. Um, I do apologise for that. I wanted to get this up yesterday, and just as I was sort of starting the editing, my wife reminded me, which I'd forgotten about, that my little girl had a netball tournament, so it just, you know, I couldn't finish it off last night. Um, but I've just done a bit of research this morning and just sort of looked into it, and I've not spent a lot of time 10, 15, 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, with more time, with a few hours or whatever, I could probably come up with a lot more. Um, but just in a you know 20 minutes of research this morning i've come up with a few alternative suggestions to what we could have had for st patrick's day tank um you know the i know we've already got some but the, the irish guards also used Crom, uh, cromwells um they used not cromwells churchill's uh mark sixes which i don't think we've got in the game i'm not saying you know a churchill would have been better it wouldn't but I, you know it's just out there um, I've been trying to determine what tanks uh, the Irish Guards and Irish Regiments used uh, in the Second World War. There were the Churchill Sixes that they got um, at some point, and uh, Comets as well, apparently, maybe. Uh, but a lot of them were Sherman, um, you know, like it was at the time. And uh, again, I know we've already got Shermans, we've got American Shermans, we've got British Shermans. The Sherman Three, there's now Russian Sherman with the Champion One. Um, but it, you know, no, again, I'm not saying it should have been. But the, there's more out there. But there's a, there was a story about uh, a lieutenant Gorman. Let's have a look. Where are we? Let me see if I can find it again because I thought I had it and now I can't find it. And uh, I'll, I'll go on about that in a minute. I've, I've basically just rambled on for most of that match. Um, but as you can see, I, I'm probably not even using the comic properly. <laughs> That's probably why I don't particularly get on with it very well or like it overly much. But Sometimes I just feel that it's not as good as it could have been, and I do apologise for it banging outside. I don't know what's going on. Um, somebody's making a lot of noise. And, you know, I mean, you see, this is the thing that gets me. I like the Centurion. I, I really do like the Centurion, but the Centurion has more going for it than this does. Obviously, you know, it's a tier higher. But it seems to be better suited to its purpose with its strong turret, uh, good gun depression. You know, it seems to be better on the ridges and, and in hull down positions than the Comet does. The Comet, you just seem to be able to have to pop back and forth and what have you. But these are just average games. These were the average games. In fact, two of the better games that I had in this tank uh, yesterday. But they were kind of average for me. So not great. I've seen somebody that, that got an ace with about 2,300. Um... I think it might have been uh, Vanilla Roper actually, on uh, on Twitter, who, who got an ace with uh, about 2,300 damage in it, and uh, seems to be enjoying it. And you know, she knows a lot, a few, quite a few people who are enjoying it. Uh, not so much for me. Um, another tier seven match, bit of a weird one yesterday. It does play up to tier ten, and I must admit, I, I know I've just shown two tier seven matches. I think the first one was tier seven. Um, but I did spend most of my time yesterday in Tier 8 matches. Uh, I think I'd say about 70% of the matches I played yesterday were Tier 8. Uh, the others were Tier 7. Didn't see Tier 9, which was a bit odd. So, yeah, did I say it plays up to Tier 10? It plays up to Tier 9. Um, I don't know if I said Tier 10. But anyway, back to what I was on about just suggestions for, for something that could have been done instead of this. There was a, uh, a chap... Lieutenant John Gorman of the 2nd Battalion, who later became uh, Sir John Gorman. Then there's a bit of a story here. He was a uh, 2nd Battalion Irish Guard. He was in his Sherman tank. And they, came, they were basically confronted by a Tiger II, or a King Tiger, um, which is 
not the ideal situation to be in in a Sherman tank, as you can imagine. Uh, even in this game, let alone in real life, I can't imagine how that felt. Uh, and basically, they fired at the, the, the Tiger, which bounced. Obviously, it would. Um, you know, it was a Sherman against a King Tiger. So yeah, they fired at it and bounced. Um, so he basically said, "Ram it," and uh, they just rammed the King Tiger with their Sherman, disabling the King Tiger and their own Sherman. Uh, he then basically got his crew to safety, uh, commandeered a Sherman Firefly, came back and um, killed the King Tiger and finished it off. So, you know, maybe a tank tied to him uh, with this, you know, with the 2nd Battalion sort of uh, insignias and whatever on it would have been nice. I know it would have been another Sherman or another Firefly and it would have got the Boilermaker. Um, but again, it, you know, it's for St. Patrick's Day. That's a little story about you know an Irish, uh, an Irish soldier, an Irish tank commander, and uh, you know maybe that would have been nice. And that was just in you know a few minutes of research. There was also, um, and I, again I don't know you know I'm not an expert on military history. I don't know if the Irish Guards or any, any Irish regiments ever had them, but there was the the Cromwell Eight, I think it was, that was uh, basically a Cromwell, but armed with a 95 millimeter howitzer. Um, no, that's not. Or is that the three inch hamster? That could be the three and a half inch hamster, which we have in game, actually. Um, yeah, never mind. Strike that one. I didn't think about it. I was thinking, that's five minutes. That sounds a bit funny. But anyway, various other things. So that's, yeah, it's probably just the three and a half inch hamster. Uh, which sounds about right. It might have been bigger. I'm going to check that. Strike that. That's the one that we had in game. Um, yeah, the 3.75 inch howitzer, or whatever it is, uh, 3.7 inch howitzer. The having game, so yeah, strike that about the uh, the <laughs> the, uh, the Cromwell Mark 8. But anyway, back to this. I suppose we ought to talk about some gameplay, hadn't I? Really, you've, you've had enough chance to see it and be rambling about various other things. Um, but I, I just like like I say, I, I just I don't know. I feel it was a little bit lazy, and. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm up on the hill. We've managed to get up here before the enemy team. They seem to have been slacking a bit getting up the hill. Not giving me much uh, of an advantage, though. As you can see, I've lost over half my health. I kept getting uh, hit from somewhere down near the enemy cap. The team spread, well, it's... Yeah, the team spread's always crap on this map, let's face it. And yesterday, I, I saw some awful, awful team spread. Most matches, in fact. Uh, 9 out of 10 matches, the team spread at the beginning was just diabolical. And uh, the majority of the team would just head in one direction. And you'd end up with like one or two tanks sort of going in the other one to cover an entire flank or sort of half the map on their own. And it, it did get a bit frustrating. But just trying to work this hill, trying to find these ridge lines, just peek over and just show the minimum amount of my turret that I need to to actually get a hit, but I've just taken another hit then, uh, T25 AT, I've got a feeling that's who was hitting me before, there he is, aim for as long as I dare, and hit his tracks, but yeah, I don't know, um, like I say, I just think it's the fact that I, I think that most tier 7s in this game, and don't get me wrong, there are tier 7 mediums that, you know, I got on with and I, I kind of enjoyed. But I still think that the tier 7 mediums in general in this game are mediocre. Just, you know, on a tier for tier basis. When you come and you look at some of the tier 6 mediums, there's some great fun tanks in there. You look at the tier 8 mediums, there's some great fun tanks in there. Tier 7 just seems to be this black hole of mediocrity for, for medium tanks. And it's a shame. You know, they, I don't know. It almost kind of feels like the Comet in general, and this is about the Comet, not just the Banshee, um, you know, I've expressed my opinions on this. I don't like the tank, I don't like the Comet, and I don't think that the Banshee is a good premium. And I know I've said that before and it's confused some people, and what I mean by that is because it's just a Tech Tree tank that's been reskinned and you're having to pay a lot of gold for. Um, but it, I'd not been in the Comet for a long time, um, a long time, and being in it and doing, doing this, it, it kind of made me feel as though it's been subject to a little bit of power creep, especially with regards to its pen. Some of the tanks that have come in recently um, that this thing has to face 
it really struggles to pen them, and you do have to swap to your premium ammo, and that's even from the side uh, on some of these defender and things like that. It, it really can struggle with some of these newer tanks that have come in, and it, it sort of does kind of feel as though it's been affected by power creep uh, to some degree. And again, some of the other tier 7 mediums feel the same because they have similar sort of pen, or they will feel the same. But there you go. Uh, again, not a great match. Did get a sniper out of it, and I was moaning about accuracy earlier, but there you go. Uh, 1500 damage and second again so uh, they are the, the Banshee Comet um, unfortunately just another reskin but I know there's going to be people out there that will love it because they love the Comet and you know they've now got the potential to earn and train crews in one so uh, there you go anyway I hope you've enjoyed that one I'll be back later on today uh, with another video for you so until then take care out there and I'll catch you next time see you later